Appamada's programmes and facilities are supported through your generosity. Your support really does make a huge difference. You'll find a link for contributions on the website at appamada.org forward slash contribute. Thank you so much. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Apologies for the first bell. My bell was leaning against a book. <laughs> so it didn't ring. It's like, oh no. We say when we listened to a talk the other night at Nothing Missing, and it says, "You think you've made a mistake ringing the bell, but it's just the moment expressing itself perfectly." Uh, there was nothing wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, the book needed to be part of the conversation, I guess. It did. It did. <laughs> well, it's good to see everyone. Uh, Marla's already given us an update on her status, as has Maria. Um, Rosemary or Lynn, do you all have any? Um, oh, well, Maria, you may have questions. Do you want to discuss before you jump in? Um, yeah, I was just thinking once you've kind of pinned and thinged and turned the frame the right way around, mm -hmm. you do saw the corners without anything to do with the face being inside of it or anything, don't you? You, you right. saw them first before. I mean, I've inserted it to make sure it all fits and checked it out that way, but you do, I, I will be just sewing the corners, won't I, um, before I attach anything to do with anything else. That's right, yes. Right. Each Thank of the you. corners in its own turn. And um, if you have if you have specific questions, I'd be happy to go through those, uh, those with you as well. Right, great. Thank you. But I think that's me for now, because I'll okay. have a quick look over at it all and see where I'm up to. Great. Thank you. Rosemary or Lynn, do you all have any questions or any updates, anything? Um, anything at all? So yeah, um, I'm, um, I'm just about to um, measure my frame. I haven't done um, anything. Um, so um, yeah, so I have my, um, my worksheet. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I might need a little, just a little um, refresher on um, before I start doing that. Okay, I know at um, last week the we stayed late, right? That was you, me. Yes, two Marie, weeks ago. Yes, or Marie may have left. Um, Marlo, that was at you. Okay, uh, to um, on how. That, that measuring so that might be be good because I could totally no I, I I'm thinking maybe I should bow out and work with the video for a while and that and that might be wise and you can I think uh, we'll probably be working silently for the majority of the first 30 minutes at least okay. um, so you can uh, probably watch stay stay in the meeting and watch um, and what about put it up on your screen Rosemary and watch okay. it as long as you're muted you can put it up on your screen and listen to it on youtube i want to watch it i think yeah but you were i think maria is communicating that you don't have to leave the meeting you could stay oh i'll oh, just just okay okay yeah you got it i i understand now yeah we understand that you're watching something you're not just oh, ignoring oh. everybody and, you know. a, a little slow on the uptake but thank you I got it. <laughs> You're not just opting out. <laughs> oh.
Is that, are you done then, Rose Marie, shall I? Yeah, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is where I'm up to. Um, so I've done, I don't know whether you can see, John. I've done the, oop, <laughs> I've done the frame. Yes, all, the way all three. All three, I've, so I've sewn, yeah, all three. Wow. So I've done all Great three. Work. And that's the I so neat. <laughs> that's the back. Um so now I'm up to doing those tricky little squares. Yes. And what I've done is I've measured on my I haven't cut them out yet. So I don't know that you can see that I've measured. Can you see? I've measured the squares and I've put them, yeah. uh and I've put the what I think is the direction of the grain, which I assume is, uh, well, you can perhaps you can perhaps explain it. But for me, I, I my understanding is because I've got a selvage edge, mm -hmm. that's that's uh, the grain that runs along that way. There's two grains, aren't there, that runs along that way, and I assume because the selvage goes like that, that's the direction of the grain. The the weft is going to be coming from directly from the selvage. The selvage would be the weft threads, I believe. I don't know if I've not got them backwards. The bolt is going. the The selvage edge is the the perp is perpendicular to the direction the fabric comes off the bolt. So right. when you come off a bolt, there's selvage on both sides. Yeah. Um, so I'm. Uh, I think we're communicating the same thing then. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm not. Um, I've found because the um, because it is a um, broadcloth, uh, and the there's uh, I did not ha I have not given any thought to why the grain would particularly matter um, for this step. Okay, okay, I'm just wondering. I, I was like, did I miss something? Because it's very possible. Um, okay, um, do you have? I mean, it, it does say in the instructions on page nine. Uh, with chalk arrows, mark the direction of the grain of the fabric. Mm -hmm. So what I'm assuming is they want you to kind of place them so that it goes with the grain of the the fabric behind it. Yeah, probably so. Behind it, but uh, I can't. We so we have deviated from their instructions already on that. Um, the original instructions had us um, the the we have we've cut it perpendicular to the way the instructions originally had anyways. Um, and I don't believe it would make a perceptible difference uh, because this particular fabric is very forgiving in that way. Um, however, the, the way we've cut it, uh, and I know because, uh, most of it was cut together and I wasn't with Anne when she cut the frames but I'm pretty confident she cut those the long ways along the bolt of the fabric uh, going with yeah that direction but I believe the frames are perpendicular to that I mean the faces are perpendicular to that okay. we were measuring the, the so we're already a little um, we're already working perpendicular um, so if you want to ignore that guidance, I think that that would be uh, perfectly acceptable. <laughs> right. <laughs> may I may I clarify then that the the direction of the grain, if if the selvage edge is up here, mm -hmm. the direction of the grain is perpendicular to it. Is that correct, or is it perpendicular to the side that comes off the bolt? To the selvage edge, I think would probably okay. be well, the, how they meant it. Um, okay. I don't think that because uh, with the grain you're usually talking about the longest part piece of wood and i don't really hear grain used to describe fabric before i usually hear wayne and weft um so i'm not really certain yeah. precisely I, what they mean i'll go uh, google that okay I, I would assume grain means uh the direction this, that the bolt it's a it's aligned on the bolt um the long ways yeah okay. that'd be well, my assumption yeah. My my uh, understanding was that um, because when you make garments, you want the uh, that when you when you when you pull a fabric like that, 
that that's the direction of the uh, because there's two grains aren't there there's the grain going that way and the grain going down that way and that mm -hmm. that's that's the 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 longer grain yes okay. it's, and, and this one which gives a bit more is the shorter grain and that so if you're making a garment you want the shorter grain to be the one that goes around the curvy bits of the of the body so so i i've kind of assumed that that that's anyway i don't think it's going to matter <laughs> and what i what, what i would like help with when i've cut them out john is the foldy bit because that looks like it's a little a little tricky i've got i've, I've, I've done a me being me i've done a paper version mm -hmm. <laughs> that looks good so you kind of uh, my understanding with the corners is that you kind of i don't know if you can see it but you do the that you go across the corner there can you see it yes i can so you've you've folded the corner in 45 degrees yeah and then okay. that and then, then fold that out. over and that like that is that right yes that would that is um ideal the because of the scale of it that can be tricky um, a lot of people end up cutting um, uh, cutting off a little bit of fabric okay. behind that just to reduce the bulk a little bit. Yeah. Um, um, many people cut um, like a little nip into the corner. Yeah. Um, and then uh, one thing I have seen someone do was they just saw which side was most likely to become exposed and then cut from there once they had already folded it. Um, okay. I think your method, um, try your method first, but if yes. you find it too bulky, um, then remove from the, 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 the corner most section. Yeah, yeah, cut a bit of that off. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. Right, which is what you would do if you were making a garment, I think anyway. Right, right, so, a pocket or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. I'll have a go and see. We'll we'll, we'll experiment. <laughs> I'm sure, it'll be great. <laughs> Well, we had just reached the silent portion, so I, uh, I guess we can begin. But of course, if you have questions, feel free to speak up. Thank you.
So John, I've had a go with one little square. How is it? Well, <laughs> it's certainly an interesting process. It's so fiddly. It's not... They're so fiddly, yeah. Yeah. I, I just wonder the precision of the of the corners is the thing that I was a bit worried about. So it's still a square. Um, I've measured it and it's still a square. And it's still roughly the 2.6 centimeter yeah. square. Yeah. That looks good. That's, um, that's that's the right side and that's the that's the wrong side. So have you uh, I can't quite see have you pinned it? um or have you basted it i've pinned it and then basted it i see it's an interesting approach um <laughs> no, no that's, 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 that's not, good. Obviously not what i'm supposed to do <laughs> no no i think that's perfect um the i think often people don't baste it until they're attaching it um and to to the, the so so the reason for my interest is that um as you can see, I've gotten notes and highlights for all through this thing on things that um, we're going to rewrite these for Appamata. And so um, I'm interested in if something, if there's a better way to do something, let's do that. Um, and no, normally they're not, it's people baste it to the frame and face. They, right. that's the, that's the phase when they start basting. Um, yeah. But I actually kind of like your way of doing it better, assuming that the basting is done cleanly so that you can fully remove all the thread, which I think that is pretty easy to do. So um, I think that based on what you, what you showed, just holding it up, it should be fine. It should be precise enough, um, especially when you, so let me, So that's the way, if you can, oh goodness. This is the way the instructions have us do it. So first you fold down one of the 0.8 centimeter seam allowances, then you fold over the other, and then you kind of do like a quarter or a third fold. So you end up with something like this, and then you pin that. And I can't imagine that that would end up any more precise than the method that you have demonstrated. And I really thought, what would be the drawback of doing this, uh, this method or this style uh, compared to doing um, this method? Like what would be the difference between this and this? And I believe the only difference would be the way it would wear over time, where okay. over, over time there, you might uh, have that little line and that little line um, you might be able to see that um, over time, but where um, body oil and whatever else builds up on it, just through normal movement and wear, right. which would not be as visible on this other square. But I can't imagine the scale of that is going to be significant. It's not like the neck piece, which was going to see significant wear. It's going to be pretty minimally worn comparatively. Um, I think if you are satisfied, I think that uh, it looked good to me. And I'm going to make note of your um, pre-basting approach. Uh, <laughs> I think that that could be nice because otherwise you have to, you know, you have to figure out like that just looks so terribly fiddly trying to pin through that little tiny, you know, uh, two millimeter wide quarter fold. That just seems like a nightmare. So um, I think you've done well. And I think no, that that I might, I might have created a new method. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm going to test, I'm going to experiment with them, but I definitely think that it should be, um, there should be no problem doing it uh, on yours. And then uh, you you have the infinite opp opportunity to re sew new Rakusu if you're ever dissatisfied. So, which I, maybe you don't want to sign up for, but uh, there's always I an option. Try, I could try one of the squares a different way and see how it works out. Yeah, yeah, um, you could. And if but in this phase, if you're just basting it before attaching to the material or to the to the body, um, you can always start over. You can always redo. I think I mean, that, that, is there anything as well about how neat the corners are? I wondered whether their method was made the corners slightly neater. I don't know whether that's anyway. I doubt. I, I doubt it. Um, okay. It's possible because it is going to be. 
you're looking at a total of like four ridges or, or two ridges of fabric there. Whereas this corner, no, I think that there's not going to be any significant gain between the two. Right. Okay. So I'll I'll bat on and see what happens next. <laughs> yes. I from what I've gathered from their photos, they tend to use thinner fabric than we do. So I think that they've just got a whole different consideration uh, in general. I think ours are just gonna going to be more challenging because we've okay. used a thicker fabric. Oh right, okay. Right. 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 Thank you. Right. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll have you. a go with another one and see what happens. And I'm gonna take note and please do let me know um your results. I'm uh, if if you if you come back and say no, it was a terrible idea. Their way worked better. Then perhaps I won't test, but I think I'm going to test at this rate. Yeah. The the other thing that I was going to say, which I you know I'm just thinking that Maria will be getting to the stage where she starts to sew the um, the frame. Hmm. And the thing that I found useful. Uh, which I don't know that she's useful to her, but what I did when, when I was doing my practice stitches was I was I made some folds in the material for the practice stitches so that I could sew through several layers mm. on my practice mm. stitches before I before I started to do the frame. Yeah, that's sounds, not a bad idea. That sounds really useful. You're revolutionising rakasu making. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> like, yeah, doing that because I just did my normal practice stitches, but yeah, doing that really gives me more of a feel mm. of, of how it feels and what I'm what I'm actually going to be doing on the actual frame. So that's a really good tip. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You very much. <laughs> I've... I don't know. I don't understand if it's the relationship of having pins to deal with on the rocket suit that throw me off or but if you look at my practice thing it's just perfect it might not be the so, scale not so the face <laughs> maybe the face that now has just re reached a size where you have so much more material to, to to handle and deal with with each stitch perhaps that's part of it too i bet you're right John. yeah because my my practice pieces are always you know this big they have one fold down the middle and that's it that's just a super simple little piece whereas well this obviously gets to be on a different scale well i also have only done one practice piece and i just keep adding lines to it mm. <laughs> and it's turning into a piece of art i i i think it is it's going to be like a diary of the sewing of the rock suit could because some of the lines at the beginning are hilarious and um i enjoy just seeing the building of it yeah that would be very certainly. dense at this point yeah no that's really cool uh, and that will be a a visual diary of sorts yeah 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 my practice stitches are always like perfect <laughs> And then when I got the rack of suits, I'm going to have to unpick that. Exactly. <laughs> it must be like a, you know, a thinking thing, maybe an overthinking thing or an overtrying or something that we do when we know it's for the actual thing, as opposed to this doesn't matter. Maybe, possibly for me, it might be that. Yeah. So sort of trying too hard to get it right. I know for me, sometimes it is um, the amount of time since I've last done practice stitching with a particular width in mind or a particular, um, like the, either the, the, the stitch that is like the thread that is visible, that individual stitch, how long it is on top of the fabric or the distance between each individual stitch. Um, if I haven't done practice stitching recently, sometimes I just get kind of miscalibrated I just kind of wander off and my the rockasu that I made and wear um, the corner my corner pieces were the first ones where I really got out of whack they were super super long stitches almost half a centimeter long um, and then I stayed with that through at each of the around the frame where the 
stitches were no larger than the ones on my current, the, the face stitches are the same size as these face stitches are here. And there's no telling why they got so, I just got miscalibrated, I think. It's amazing, isn't it? What mood you're in or how you're feeling or what place mm -hmm. you're in, how it really impacts. And it's a real <laughs> lesson, isn't it, to how that impacts life and what we're putting out what we're exuding out there, you know, is, is the same thing as what we're expressing in the Rakaso, mm -hmm. you know, how it's reflected back to us, but we can physically see it. Definitely. <laughs> the differences and the changes and the, the nuances in our moods and, and states in a state. It's quite something, isn't it? It is. And I, I have really been um, inspired, John, by watching you up close stitching because it reminds me well of a lot of things but I tend to my handwriting tends to be really big and I think that whatever it is in my brain that makes that happen also tends to make my stitches big hmm. um, it's just good to notice isn't it and to sort of reflect and sit with it mm -hmm. sit with that and it's like you know I have a feeling that there are scientists somewhere who have studied the difference between people who write big and write small. So maybe we need to get them to study <laughs> Rakasu stitches. <laughs> maybe I know that for me, there's a, I, I definitely when I write and when I stitch, I have a certain cognizance of neatness and like primness almost. Um, and then if the lighting is poor, I'll end up sewing with my face like like where my hand is now I'll have my eye like that far from the fabric I'll just really be up in there and it can end up being this very meticulous tiny near perfect stitch whereas sometimes if the lighting is good or uncomfortable um, I'll be holding it almost at arm's length and sometimes there's a little more deviation and I, I can't help but wonder if people who have larger handwriting are more focused on the communication aspect of like they're more focused on the words than on the way the words are being written. Maybe that's part of it too.
So um, I'm just doing the first measurement and I really want to be careful before I um, cut, you know, the excess off the end um, that I measured this correctly. So I got, um, I added together um, everything to 122.8. Okay. And I measured that across the top and the bottom all the way down. And um, so I have, you know, I don't know, I, I, I guess I'm, I guess I'm ready to cut, but it was really hard getting the, um, the right angles at the top and the bottom. So, Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So um, I think I'm ready to, um, to cut the excess off and then go to my next one. So, um, yeah, that's kind of well, work that. Yeah. If you want. Um, if you want to tell me the, your length of top, length of side, length of bottom, what they length are, of side, sure, sure. I'd be happy to do the math just one okay, more time. Okay, sure. That, that would be great. So we got the one and the 4.2. Mm -hmm. Then um, we have 26.9. Okay. Then the 8.4, 16 .7, okay. 8.4, 26.9, 8.4. 6.7, 4.2, and 1. Uh, you said 16.7? Uh-huh. OK. Uh, interesting. Yours is a half. Um, that's where I was wondering where you gained um, extra distance, but you got uh, a little extra here, and yours are a little shorter here. Which I think is uh, fine. I, we both Ann and I have seen yours in as it's going along, and it looks normal. Um, it's just you mean where it looks like longer. It, uh, the the top to bottom is longer than usual. Yeah, and there's any number of, of no, not than usual uh, than mine <laughs> than the example I happen to have in front of me. Um, it, there's any number of different causes, and I don't think it's worth investigating. I just uh, always I'm ever curious. You're only 0.9. Your total length is 0.9 longer than mine. So one centimeter longer. So it's hardly a major variance. Um, I think you're well, well, well within expectations. You, you mean within your Rakusu? Then yeah, the one that I, I did, you're only one centimeter different on the total length here, um, which is, which oh, sounds okay. right. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, right, because I had 121.9 uh marked on my scrap paper here when we were working last last time yeah and that's the one that, that that's my measurement okay okay so um I guess i'm double checking right now that sounds right though did you get 122.8 also i'm done adding oh i'm sorry yep 122.8 Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, all right. And so you're you've you've measured all of your your lines then, all four of the, the long lines. You've got all that measured out. Only only the um the um uh the okay the length of the top and the length of the bottom of the frame. So that I could cut off the excess at the end is would that be the best way to do it? That would be fine. Yeah. So you've got um, two lines, ten point four centimeters apart, basically. Oh no, I d I'm sorry. I d you're reminding me about the lines. I'm thinking of just um, you know. Oh, this line here. Yes, we got. Yeah, I was just going to cut that piece off. Should I do that? I think that would be fine. Um, and, yeah, and, I... and then go for the lines. The only reason I would caution against that is you don't want to lift. Um, if you can do all of your measurements with the material flat, unmoved, and mm -hmm. as straight mm -hmm. and flat as possible before mm -hmm. moving it, before making okay. a cut, that would be ideal. Okay. All your measurement in one go. That makes that makes total sense, and I actually have time after the class to do that, which is <laughs> for my level of discipline. That's really really good to do. Um, so am I um, the the what we're seeing here on the uh, worksheet, the double line is really the top line is the edge of the fabric and the first line is the seam allowance line. Yeah, the second right. line is the seam. Line. Okay, it's not two drawn lines. It's just one drawn line. 
Right. Assuming you have a selvage edge or a pulled edge on the, the far have, side. If it's, oh, oh, you're right. On the one end, I will have to do two. That's right. That's right. I do have selvage on one, but not, of course, not on the other. Okay. Right. So I'm doing lines. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. My first corner. Oh, first card. Congratulations. Congratulations. I don't know if I was supposed to do both sides. That was to tell me that it was the top right corner. Top you know? corner. But yeah, you got that matching thread. It's so hard to, to see. It looks good and clean, though. Oh, it's hard to see, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's looking all right from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah. I doubt your, your Sangha member or Sangha mates are going to be scrutinizing too closely given well, I think that I will, you know, it's like when other people put theirs up i'm like really looking to see <laughs> and comparing you know that comparison man is said comparing is a form of violence to the self isn't it you should never you should never because everyone is so much neater than me they're like so like oh goodness me but you just admire it don't you that ability to just be so you know like lynn's it's just so neat it's just incredible from a distance Lynn, that's more Thank than you. likely all, all we'll ever be to, to see of yours is from a distance. Well, it's beautiful from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. They'll never know. They'll never know. They'll never know the truth. <laughs> but we will. <laughs> that's part of the practice. <laughs> so next time we see each other, Maria. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, from across the pond, it looks perfect. <laughs> Second square. Right. Doesn't it? it does. Yeah. yeah. From here, it looks perfectly oh, square. Yeah. Maria, what did you say about it? It's such a good process for what? Just doing it all together, isn't it? It's, <gasps> yes. it's just been, it's changed it for me, being able to do it like this. Yeah. It's really just changed the whole experience. Absolutely. And it's awesome and, and, you know, a real sharing experience. Right. And I feel like I'm getting to know Marla and Rosemary and other people. You kind of, that we, we wouldn't, we'll never probably meet, but we meet this way. Yeah, it's like I've seen John in the Zendo. But it's like, you know, getting to know, getting to know each other more this way. It's really lovely. Don, I just heard this week that you're next year moving to Indiana or someplace to farm. Illinois. Uh, Illinois. I'm, at, I, I'm, I'm actually in the town that we're going to be moving to as we speak. Uh, wow. Exciting. Uh, it is exciting. It's amazing. Yeah. Life changes. It's eh? wild. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> we, we already own the land. So now it's just a matter of connecting the dots, putting a house in the area, you know. So. Wow. We'll, what will you grow? Vegetables. It'll be an organic vegetable farm, kind of like a, a, what you'd find at a farmer's market. Oh, that wow. type of stuff. Exciting. That's wonderful. People are talking about you. Yeah, you would be able to grow more than my 10 potatoes that I've just grown. <laughs> I got 10 out of my crop. <laughs> but wow. I mean, it well, felt good to grow them. I and mean, I've got five peppers growing now. So it's a really good feeling, isn't it? It's like I go out every day and it's like, whoa. Fantastic. Yeah, no. like calm excitement, I call it, you know, when you go out and check on them every day and see see what's happening. Because everything changes so quickly with them, doesn't it? It's incredible how, how fast everything grows. It amazes me. It's astounding. Yeah, I've got a few hundred carrot plants right now that I'm really curious how they're doing without me. We've got friends watering, but we'll, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what's, what's there when we get back. Well, we've reached the top of our hour. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being.
Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank Great you. Week.